four. And your banner over us is love. Today, O oh Lord, I thank you. Because an unusual grace is released even in this prayer. Amen. Any who believe, who are under the sound of my voice, from today they will start commanding dominion over money. Amen. Thank you for a release of the power to get wealth. Thank you for new opportunities. Thank you for open heavens. Thank you for new ideas. Thank you for divine destiny relationships. All of them are activated and they will be made manifest this very week. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone under the sound of my voice. You are under the weight of death. This is the word of the Lord to you. It is more blessed to give than to receive. It's more blessed to give than to receive. So this week, the mercy of God will locate you. Amen. And things will be turned around for your good. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. To another person, I declare... As God's servant sent to you, there will be no lack again. Amen. To another person, God has given you a new beginning. I see a small offspring of a plant. And God tells me to tell you it will blossom. Amen. To another person, you came to this service distraught. You're just putting up a front. But inside, you're gone. You're empty. You're hopeless. You're drowning. I see the hand of the Lord reaching out to help you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now receive the help of God. Yeah. You will not drown. Yeah. You will not be stranded. Yeah. That situation will not swallow you. God brings you out into a wealthy place. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering if you receive his word. And please be joyfully seated in his presence. Amen. Amen. Actually, uh, I, I wanted to say one more prayer and it will help you. I'll ask you to stand in a few minutes. Psalm 84, verse 7. Psalm 84 verse 7. We will stand in shortly again. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them appearing before God in Zion. They go from strength to strength. Every one of God, every one of them appearing before the Lord in Zion. What it means is that every time I come before the Lord... My strength is increased. My strength is increased. Every time I appear before the Lord, strength is increased in my life. They go from strength, and you need strength. You need strength. Now, watch another scripture which will help you. Exodus chapter 34. Verse 24. Exodus 34, verse 24. Start from 23. Three times a year shall all your men appear before the Lord your God, the God of Israel. This was in the Old Testament. It was compulsory for them to come before God three times a year. In the New Testament, we come every week and every time is called. But look at the effect when we appear before the Lord. Verse 24. When they appear before me, when they come to my presence, look at what I will do. I will cast out nations before them and enlarge their borders. So I'm in God's presence and he's busy 
working for me, enlarging my coast. That's why I don't, I don't encourage anybody to miss a church service. You're robbing yourself. Number one, you're robbing yourself of strength. You will become weaker and weaker the more you leave God's presence. We know God is everywhere, but he's the one that said we should meet every Sunday. So when I don't appear, then my strength is not renewed and strengthened. So I grow weaker. And life is not a game for the weak. Once you're weak, you will become a victim. Life is a jungle. And when you're weak, you will become a victim. In the jungle, they, they, they eat only the weak. The stronger you are, the better. And God understands that. That's why we say we should come. Now look at this one. He says, when you also come, there is enlargement. Enlargement. Your, the borders of your life is enlarged. Look at the next one. He says, I will enlarge their borders, neither shall any man desire their land. So even if you leave your doors open and come, I'm not saying you should leave your doors open. But he says, even if you do that, no man will desire, they won't see it. They won't desire it. They won't take what is yours. They've been taking what is yours because you have not been in God's presence. When you go up to appear before the Lord your God, please, I want to encourage you. Let nothing or no one stop you from appearing before the Lord. No excuse is good enough. No reason is reasonable enough. It's appearing before him. You go from strength to strength. Your borders are enlarged. He makes sure nobody desires that which is yours, including the devil. There are some people, Satan is eyeing their blessing, eyeing what they have. He said, when you appear before me, I will make sure that nobody that exists eyes what is yours. And so the first prayer point as you are where you are seated, I want you to pray. Lord, as I've appeared before you, let me go from glory, let me go from strength to strength. Strengthen me. Pray that prayer. Strengthen me spiritually. Strengthen me mentally. Strengthen me emotionally. Strengthen me physically, my body. Strengthen me financially. Pray that prayer for yourself. I am I've, I've appeared before you. Lord, let me go from strength to strength. They go from strength to strength. Each one of them appearing before the Lord in Zion. Strengthen me, Lord. Let me go from strength to strength in this service. Everyone pray for yourself. The next one you're going to ask the Lord, as I'm in your presence, enlarge my borders. Give me enlargement. Enlarge my life. Enlarge my business, enlarge my career, enlarge my destiny, enlarge my finances. Are you praying that for yourself? That's the word of the Lord. Enlarge me, O oh God. Enlarge me with every good thing. Lord, enlarge me. The next one, Lord, as I'm in your presence, let no man, let no being desire that which is mine. Let no man, let no being, let no evil eye desire that which is mine. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we have prayed and received. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering if you receive the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, let's take our confession and then we go right into the service. Genuinely, before we do that, there are people who are worship with us online. I've not seen some of them two years, three years, consistently worshiping. So when people are around and they are giving excuses, it doesn't make sense to me. May you not be robbed of your blessings Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Uh, only this side is answering. I said in Jesus' mighty name. Alright, let's take our confession. Let's declare one, two, three, go. As I sit under the teaching of the word of God, I declare that my heart is a prepared ground.
to receive the living seed of the word of God. I am focused and do not permit any form of distraction or distortion. As the word comes forth, every need in my life is met. I receive revelation knowledge. I receive light for every dark area of my life. I receive the impartation of the spirit and grace of the word to be a doer. I pull down and destroy every stronghold and heighten in my mind that will challenge or oppose the truth of the word of God I hear. I receive and believe the word I hear today as the truth of God. This word bears fruit in my life a hundredfold as God confirms the word with miracles, wonders, and signs in my life. Amen. There's somebody under the sound of my voice. You had a very terrible dream and it has been concerning you. It has put you in big concern. The Lord asked me to tell you today that that dream is annulled by virtue of being in his presence. I, and he said I should make this decree that in the name of the Lord Jesus, that dream will not have any manifestation in your life or on the earth in the name of Jesus. That evil is aborted right now. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Amen. Amen. The heavens are open. So even as you're seated here, there is no issue God will not touch today. Amen. You're not going back the same. Yes. So let your heart be open. Mighty things are happening. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Lord, as I speak your word, I thank you for the anointing that destroys you. I thank you for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for the authority that is in the name of Jesus. Let no one on any issue escape your touch and your notice. Let your people go home liberated. Let your people go home blessed. Let your people go home empowered. And as I speak this word today, only the Lord Jesus is heard. Only him is seen and only him is glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Reinforcing dominion part two. Reinforcing dominion part two. In the part one, we looked at a lot of things. I won't have time to go into that. But in this part two, I want to start off with a testimony that will encourage us, which will also uh, be the tenor of the words you'll be hearing. Some few years back, uh, uh, I was in the church where I served. After service, uh, we were attending to people and all that. This happened in VI some few years back. And all of a sudden, we heard a commotion from outside. And it's one of the people we normally help. And the guy, he was, he was, he's a drug addict and he had gone haywire. You know, when you deny them of money, there is trouble. So he had brought out his scissors or something and he was chasing people. Because he came, asked for money, and the person in charge wanted to confirm. Because he said Okada brought him all the way from some a camp in Ogun State then to VI to come to church. So he needs to pay the Okada and called one ridiculous amount. So the person went to confirm. So the Okada said, no, I just picked him from, uh, is it Babich or Amadubel? I can't remember clearly. And he got angry, started quarreling. And as they paid him, he got angry and carried a huge stone and threw at the guy. The car, the guy, the bike man. The bike man just narrowly escaped it. So he brought out the scissors and started chasing everybody. So everybody started running. Incidentally, uh, the Holy Spirit helped me because I saw something from the walls and I just felt it is time to practice it. So when the commotion was going on, everybody had scattered. It was a big scene. So I came out, and I did what I'm going to teach you to do. And it will work if you believe it. I want to hear a louder amen. amen. So I came out, I saw him, and under my breath, what I've learned, I said quietly, 
in the name of the Lord Jesus, I take authority over this violent spirit. I bind you in Jesus' name. Amen. Nobody heard it. I said it. After I finished saying it, I moved to the guy. Walked straight to him and told him, give me that scissors. And he handed it over to me. I said, sit down. And he sat down. When I started ministering to him, he calmed down. Then we took him over. Now, what I did, you can also do. What is called his dominion. Because there is a spirit behind what he was doing. Let me give you another example. I went to do counseling with, in a troubled home. I'd gone there a day earlier, spent six hours. The second day, I was now preparing for service. I was called to go again. I, I don't go out on Saturday, so I was not happy. But the person really demanded and asked for that. So I went. When I got there, I saw a crowd in the living room. Seven adults or eight. Lawyer is there. They are planning how to... Um, I went with my wife, so she's a witness. They are planning how to split everything. So, we will talk and talk. The man will get up and walk away. I mean, people are waiting for you. Go outside. Say he wants to cool off. They will offer him suggestion. No. This one, no. I, in my mind, I was saying, ah, I spent six hours here. Six hours talking. Can't say that. So he did it the first time, the second time. So the third time, I now came in. I said, look, I'm a pastor. This is why I came here. This couple, they know who I am. Um, since this is what's going to happen, uh, these things, we, have, we don't seem to be making any headway. This is what we, I think we should do. So I, I gave the suggestion. Then the man just erupted. You want to come and divide my home? Mm, talk, talk, talk. So this one, I was not quiet. I didn't say anything under my breath. I stood up. And I told him, my friend, sit down. He said, in my house, I said, which are, sit down. Then he dropped and sat on the seat. Then it's like his eyes were opened. He started apologizing to everybody. And the matter that was how it was resolved. What was that? Dominion. If you don't know how to exercise dominion in this life, I can bet you with everything I know one day you'll be a victim. It's just a matter of time. And that victim that you'll be, you may never recover. Why? Because dominion is an intrinsic part of man. Dominion. Dominion means to rule. Dominion means to have complete authority. When dominion diminishes, man diminishes. When dominion is absent, man becomes a slave. And so when we talk of reinforcing dominion, it is actually reinforcing your life. Reinforcing your well-being. That means strengthening it. Dominion is not just by shouting. The more you know, the less you shout. First Samuel chapter 4. Let me show you from scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 4, we'll start from verse 2. 1 Samuel chapter 4 from verse 2. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined the battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines. And they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. Israel was not supposed to lose a war. But they've lost this war. Because something was not right. Now look at verse 3. And when the people were coming to the camp, the elders said, the elders, they know why things happen. 
That's why the Bible says, ask the elders. The elders found out, hmm, this is not supposed to be. We've seen greater days. We've seen greater day things. So they said, wherefore had the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Why did we suffer defeat? Because every time you suffer defeat, you have received a portion from shame, reproach, and disgrace. Maybe financial defeat, marital defeat, whatever it is. So the elders say there is a reason for this. Then let us fetch the ark of the Lord, ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it comes among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. So let's go and pray. Let's go and fast. Let's go to mountain. Let's go and meet a man of God so that they can do something. See, when you don't deal with the root of an issue and deal with the symptom, you are inviting shame more and more. And God never tackles any matter of our lives dealing with the symptoms. It goes down to the root. Now, look at verse 4. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord which dwelleth between the cherubims and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, we are there with the ark of the Lord. Can we go on? And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout so that there was an earthquake. Now I tell you to shout, you shout. But it's nothing compared to their shout. They shouted so much that the earth waked. Why? Because the ark, the manifest presence of God has come into the camp. So to them, victory is inevitable. Victory is certain. Ah, this is God in our midst. Now look at the next verse. And when the Philistines heard the sh noise of the shout... They said, what meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is come into the camp. And they said, woe is unto us, for there had not been such a thing here to. Satan fears the presence of God. The ark was the physical symbol, physical representation of the presence of the invisible God among the Jews. So when they, it, it gave them confidence, they shouted and the Philistines became afraid. One of the things we learn here is that your shout is more powerful than you think. You see the clap you clap, more powerful than you think. There was a time we prayed a prayer some time ago. He said, you will clap your hands and cease at them. So, and many of us don't even know. You know, clapping is very healthy. It helps the heart. You don't know? Very healthy. If you like, if you just think, just clap. Just normal clap, not to the Lord, just clap. If your heart will sound good, scientifically proven. So that's why coming to church, you go from strength to strength. Because by the time the fire leads you, you clap your hand, you dance. Does it make sense what we are saying? So they said the enemies were afraid. They said this kind of thing has never happened before. Verse 8. Woe to us who shall deliver us out of the hand of this mighty God. So they thought that the, <laughs> the Israelites had many gods like them. So he said, who will deliver us from this mighty God? Remember the first battle. How many people did they kill of the Jews? 4,000. These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. So they have a history. The enemy has history of what God has done in your life. You should, when you're praying sometimes, you also remind the enemy of what God has done. 
Because it weakens him. Somebody getting something? You should boast about what God has done. He delivered me before now. Uh -uh. He will do the same thing. You boast about him. So, because he has records. That's one of the ways we pray. If he helped you before, you should have records of what he has done. When you stop recounting the goodness of God, the testimonies of God, your miracles will dry up. Don't be too focused on the issues you're facing today and forget what God has done in the past. Keep talking about them. Keep reminding yourself of them because when you talk about them and speak of them, the enemy takes record and he scares him. Somebody getting something? These are just um, some, what do you call that? This is not the main thing, just going somewhere. Verse 9. Then they told themselves, be strong, quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews. So if you are not a servant, you are a master. So they were fighting so that the Jews cannot rule over them. They want to maintain their stranglehold, their dominion over the Jews. But they were afraid. Sometimes Satan comes with bold face. You know, fear is... Is the acronym for false evidence appearing real? So you beat yourself like men. They were afraid of. So we don't want to be servants. We want to maintain a stranglehold on the Jews. Just like poverty, causes, diseases, witchcraft, limitations. They want to maintain a stranglehold on you. Because remember what I said, life is a game of dominion. Life is a game of dominion. We will not be servants unto the Hebrews as they have been to us. Quit yourself like men and fight. Then verse 10. And the Philistines fought and Israel was smitten. The ark was with them. But they were smitten. And they were not just fleet smitten or destroyed. They took off. They fled. Every man into his tent and there was a very great slaughter. For there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. So the first one was 4,000. Then I went to bring the ark. It became... 30,000. So it was better the ark was not brought. Now look at the next one. 30,000 footmen fell. And that very ark was taken. And then the people bearing it, the two sons of Eli, they were also killed. Bearing the ark. So that you have dominion is not by shouting or outward show. I want you to know that. Dominion is that the right to rule, to have complete authority. Number one, it is a revelation. You have to have a revelation. Number two, you must understand that it is your fundamental divine right. Just like we have fundamental human rights. And then the third one, you must understand that dominion is a position in the spirit realm. Let me go through it again. Number one, dominion is not by shouting. It is, number one, a revelation. That means, you see, you can't know God by theology, by studying. You know God by revelation. God has to be revealed to you. When I was in school, I used to smash my CROK, Christian Religious Knowledge. 100, 90, 99. I thought I knew Bible. When I got born again, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when I started reading the Bible, I said, this thing was closed to me. Now it's opened. That's what we call revelation. Start seeing something in a new light. One of our testifiers today, he said, God opened his eyes and he saw where he had stayed for two years and he started crying. Revelation. Dominion is 
a revelation. You must have that revelation to function in it. Then, dominion is your fundamental divine right from God. It's a follow come, as we say in Nigeria. Do you, have you ever seen any newborn baby that was taught how to breastfeed? Have you ever seen? Once you put their mouth at the breast of the mom, they take off. They don't teach that. The same way, dominion is a follow come. And then the third one, dominion is a position in the spirit realm. When you leave that position, dominion will lift from you. We saw that in the first service. In the first service, we said, Adam had dominion over the earth. God said in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, let us make man in our image and after our likeness so that they, man, that is a race, not just one person, so including you and I, will have dominion. So it's when God thought of man, created man, it is part of what he attached. The same way your eyes are in the spirit realm, dominion that was attached. But Adam lost it. When he lost that his position, he ceased to exercise dominion. And so the things and creatures he would have ruled started ruling him. Does it make sense what we are saying? The way to recover what was lost, listen carefully, the way to recover our position of dominion, the way to recover our fundamental divine right of dominion, the way to see dominion as an experience. Now, let me explain this third one being a revelation, dominion being a revelation. In the realm of the spirit, you will only get what you see, not what you hear. Hearing is just the means for seeing in the realm of the spirit. Let me give you an example so you understand. When I say I'm putting on a red shirt, it's something contradicts to your mind because what I'm wearing is a white shirt. In your imagination, you've seen a red shirt. No, when I speak, you see something. Am I right? Huh? Am I right? All right. So in the spirit realm, what, listen carefully. You will only be given what has been revealed to you. That means what you see. God told Abraham, as far as your eyes can see. So every time revelation comes, that means you see every situation from the light of God's word, God has brought to you dominion over that issue. Somebody quoting what I'm saying? Because once I see it in that light and believe it and start acting like that, just find out that everything will be subject to me. That's what dominion is. It's a revelation. The Holy Spirit opens your understanding. Let me give a personal testimony as we proceed. I, I used to think that, you know, you have good days and then bad days. Now, Monday is good, so Tuesday, you know, life is like this. When I got born again, I still thought like that. Then I had a revelation from the scripture, word of God. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. The path of the righteous is like a shining light. What? That shines brighter and brighter. No. This is not what I thought. This is not what I was told life is. Even the elders will tell you, no. You know, that's how life is. God give it. God take it. It's like this and like that. That scripture contradicted everything because my eyes were open. So from that day, because I believed it, I started confessing it and expecting that my Monday must be better than the Sunday. And that Tuesday must be better than Monday. That it is my divine right. I kept insisting on it because I've seen it. As far as your eyes will see, the Lord gives to you. That's what God told Abraham. So, dominion, because if you don't know these things, you will just be doing dominion and you won't be exercising nada. It is first a revelation. When the revelation of God's word comes, what is revelation of God's word? You are seeing the situation. You are seeing life. 
you're seeing the issues from the light of God's word. You see, you're seeing me now because these lights are bright. If I change them to red, these colors will not be real. Am I right? So that light is the word of God to see the situation. When you see it like that and believe it, God has given you dominion over that issue. What you now do with it is left for you. Does it make sense? So it is a revelation. It is a right. You must see it as your right. I've showed you Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. The day God made man, he made him to have dominion on the earth. Can we go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26? Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them, not one man, them, the race of men, let them have dominion. Let them rule. Let them have complete authority. Over what? We see that in Psalm 8. Psalm 8, verse 4 to verse 6. Somebody is being set free today. Yeah. You know, you can have dominion over money. You can call money if you have the revelation, know it's your right. You can turn money to come. You, that's when you call for... If you don't have this understanding, your confession will not yield much. You must have a revelation. So you call for money. Calling for those things that be not as though they were. Do you know that? You know you can change the circumstances by revelation. So you call it forth. Dominion is always exercised in words. 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 I have always taught people, how are you? They say, I'm fine. I say, ah, ah, fine. <laughs> how are you? I'm blessed and highly favored. You don't say it just to pastor in church. Or you say it everywhere you go. I am blessed. Because you, it, it has to be a revelation. Light has come. What are we to have dominion over? What is man that you are mindful of him? David was asking God. Why are you mindful? Some people think God is not mindful. God is mindful of you. That means you're full in his mind. You're filled. His thoughts are about you. How will I make this thing good? How will I work it out? It's not as if he's in heaven lounging. No. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Look at the next verse. For you have made man a little lower than the angels. Elohim, not angels. Made man a little lower than God himself. And then you've crowned man with glory and honor. Now look at verse 6. You have made man, you have made him to have dominion. Did you see that again? Over what? The works of, that's number one. Where we have dominion. What God created. The works of his hands. Anything created that is on the earth, by God's design, you should exercise dominion over it. Over the works of his hands and has put how many things? How many things? Some people can be, you know, when, I, when you know you're truly believing, when you know you truly understand and believe the word of God, is that when you read it at first, it looks as impossible as a wonder to you. Do you get what I'm saying? Ah, so you have made me to have dominion over all things. Ah, it takes, if you really understand it, you will go, take a step back. All things means all things. And God cannot lie. So he wants us to have dominion over all things. What are the all things? I'll give us a few. Number one, wants us to have dominion over circumstances. Over circumstances. Things are not working out fine. When you understand this, you can change it by exercising dominion. Circumstances. Circumstances, you can change circumstances to favor you. To work out for your good. 
circumstances, difficult one, impossible one, is what we call mountains. There's a recent testimony that was shared here. One of us, she's presently holiday, on holiday abroad, so she wanted to find a house because she will stay for a month, for months. And then they were giving her all, kind of, all kinds of conditions. Do this, do that, bring this paper, bring that paper. Almost impossible. She didn't know what she did, but I'm interpreting it now. She said she went in prayer to God, and she told God, I'm here because my pastor sent me, he prayed for me before I left. He has told us that how he started the church and how you have sustained the church. He's my pastor. That's my church. So the same grace I will receive. I am not going to be stranded. You must do something. Now, her testimony, the same people, not one company. We are talking of Oyibo companies. The same people, the same companies that rejected her, one by one started what? Calling her back. She was now spoiled for choice on what to use. What did she do? She exercised dominion. You know, you can have dominion and not exercise it. And I said you exercise dominion with what? Words. Your words. I can't speak it on your behalf. And thank God today she has the accommodation. Stressless. When you have this, God is giving us expo to the glorious life. The things that are not in your life today is exercising dominion that will bring them up. Somebody say amen. amen. Mark chapter 11. If you shall say to this mountain, verse 23, exercise dominion over circumstances. If thou shalt say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his hand, heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have what he saith. Even if when they say it as a joke. Country hard though, he shall have what he saith. This one, Naira is going up and uh, Naira is going down and multiplying. The way it is, he shall have what? What he saith. What shall I say, Pastor? I, I wake up, declare, this is the day the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed be the Lord my God who daily loads me with what? Benefits. Declare it. You're exercising dominion. So over circumstances, when you face a mountain... Nothing man has ever invented has moved a mountain. But God says your words of faith will move that mountain. So start speaking. This morning your mouth is circumcised. Amen. Now look at one more scripture. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. I wanted to move to the next point but I have a leading we should do that. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. Are you getting something from this? Death and life are where? In the power of what? The tongue. Sometimes people come to me, they greet me, I say, ah, big man, ah, big woman. They say, no, I'm not. I say, this one is limiting themselves. Say amen, claim it. They tell you you are shining. They say, glory to God. I'm shining brighter and brighter. Don't be too humble and imprison yourself in the pit of desolation. Open your mouth wide. God will feel it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are not with God or Satan. They are where? The power of your tongue. So, how do I exercise dominion? My words. How do I exercise dominion? So, how do I exercise dominion? The next way we exercise dominion is we exercise dominion over Satan and demons. This may be new to a lot of people, but I will show you. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Many of us, we fear Satan 
and demons more than we fear God. And that is very, inco very incorrect. You're on the wrong lane. Ah, don't touch it too. <laughs> My former place I used to live. There's a neighbor that was downstairs giving trouble. Nobody could confront him, including the landlord. And the man was constituting users. Nepa Billy will not pay. At that time, we didn't have, um, what do you call that thing? Uh, prepaid. So because of him, they would cut the whole light. And he still would not pay. So I asked him, what's the reason? They mentioned that he's from one town. And like the man does juju. Huh? He said, I said, is that why you've not confronted him? I went to the man. He said, my friend, pay your bills. If you don't pay your bill, I will personally lead them to cut your light. The righteous is as bold as what? Uh, but make sure you're righteous. Also. If you're compromised, it won't work. Do you know what I hate most in life? Lack of boldness. The righteous is as bold as a lion. When you lack boldness, I can bet you, you can't fulfill destiny because boldness is demonstration of courage based on right standing. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1. Before we go to this, I feel I should just touch a bit on it. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Proverbs 28 verse 1. said, the wicked flees when no one is pursuing. The wicked takes off. Nobody is pursuing. He said, but the righteous is as bold as a lion. Even after you get born again, you need boldness to go to prayer and get things from God. Hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter um, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 16. Because boldness is not just to confront Satan, even to get things from God. You need boldness. Hebrews 12, 24, not 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. New Testament. Many of us are not getting things because we go there crying. <laughs> no boldness. You need boldness. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24, please. Let us therefore come boldly to where? The throne of grace. So without boldness, they will not grant you access to that throne of grace. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. It is with boldness we obtain mercy. Not bold face, so boldness as a revelation. That we may obtain mercy and then find grace to help. In the time of need, if you're not bold in the time of need, you can't get nada from God. Did you get what I'm saying? So his boldness is not just to confront the devil. Boldness is also to get things from the Lord. Okay, fourth, sorry. Hebrews 4, 16. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Hebrews 4, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain Obtain mercy. So to obtain mercy, I need to come to God boldly. And find grace to help in the time that I need it. So we are to exercise dominion over Satan and demons. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Please, don't misplace the fear you should have for God, reverential fear, and give it to the devil. It offends God. The way you fear the devil and demons and juju men and all that, fear God like that. You know, when you fear God like that, you can't fear anything, anybody. You become bold, like a lion. Look at what the Lord Jesus tells us. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you power. I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over some powers of the enemy, most powers of the enemy, all the powers of the enemy. But when you are compromised, you can't do this. That's why I, you live holy. 
we live holy so that we can exercise dominion. That's why we don't lie. We don't play games. Why? So we can exercise dominion. You see, Daniel was living holy. Daniel chapter 6. They threw him into the mouth, the den of lions. Threw him there overnight. Hebrews 11.33 tells us that he, sh not God, though, he shot the mouth of lions. Daniel himself shot the mouth. That means there was danger, but they can't eat him. And as accusers, when they were thrown to that same den, the lions broke even their bones. That's why we live holy, so that we can exercise power. And life is a game of dominion, it's a game of power. To get money, you need power. Deuteronomy 8:18 8, is the one who gives thee the power to get wealth. To even get favor, you need boldness and grace. Uh, Lord, favor, favor. Uh, my destiny here. But no, you have to have something you know, that they will see and be attracted to you. The way to get it is what I'm teaching you. If I entered full-time ministry, there was no office I went to that I, God didn't raise somebody for me. Somebody would just see me and like me. I knew what they were liking was not me. Oh. It was the scent of God, the fragrance of God around me. Does it make sense what I'm saying? To prove to you what I'm saying, this week, you will be remembered Amen. from the unlikeliest waters Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by shall by any means harm you. I give you power over Satan, dominion over Satan, but we can't exercise it if we are compromised. What should we have dominion over? The next one. Are you getting something from this? Are you getting something from this? The next one, we have dominion over nature. Over nature. You can speak to the atmosphere. You can send your word. I send, where I am now, there are people listening all over the world. The word of God is going anywhere, everywhere. Joshua, in the book of Joshua chapter 10 verse 12, they were fighting battles and the assignment has not been completed and the day was closing so he looked up and told he didn't pray he spoke to the son son stand still until i finish what i'm doing and the son obeyed him because god has given us dominion over the works of his hands can we go to joshua chapter 10 verse 12 you're traveling maybe the car spoiled you can speak over the car your children, there's uh, somewhere maybe you have news. Instead of panicking, you can send the word of the Lord. <laughs> Does it make sense what we are saying? Yeah. You can send, the, your file is down there somewhere. You can send the word and the secretary will just remove it from under and put it on the top. They don't know. It's the dominion you exercise it. It's happening. You can send the word and tonight somebody will remember you. Somebody getting what I'm saying? Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of all Israel, not prayer to God, he said, he exercised dominion. He said, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon. Gibeon, stand there. And thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. He told nature and creation where they should be. Did they obey him? Did he pray to God? He had understanding and exercised dominion. No, you can exercise dominion over your body. You speak to your body. Speak to your liver. Speak to your kidneys. Speak to your heart. Speak to your brain. Speak to your eyes. Speak to your mouth. Speak to your womb. Speak to your joints. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? And then we can exercise dominion over sin. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. Uh, there is nothing that you know, you know, you know, everybody must have something that there is a life from the pit of hell. 
a lie from the pit of hell. Romans chapter 6 from four, verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For sin shall is not permitted to have dominion over you. That means you sin when you choose to. Not that you say it's Satan. No, it's a lie. So it's exercise dominion over sin. Why should I exercise dominion over sin? Because every time you sin, you diminish the glory of God. And without the glory of God, you can't exercise dominion. We are, not, we are not against sin. So it's not just about going to hell. We are talking of living a colorful life on the earth. When Adam sinned, the glory of God on him lifted. And people he should be presiding over started being his masters. There are many people here People and things that you be masters over and even under the sun, they are now ruling over you because of sin. It's not about going to hell alone. Hell is, hell is far. We are still in this life. We can't live as slaves. That's why the, the preacher said in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, there is an evil I've seen under the sun. Look at your life. The prodigal son came to himself and said, enough! Every time we sin, we puncture the glory of God around us. We puncture it. We give Satan a room to come in. And we can't exercise dominion. Psalm 8 again, verse 4 to 6. Psalm 8 again, from verse 4 to 6. Are you getting something from this? What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? Verse 5. You have made him a little lower than the angels of God and crowned man with glory and honor. As a result of that crowning with glory and honor, verse 6, you have now made him to exercise dominion. So where there is no glory of God, it's not possible to exercise dominion. And what eats and destroys the glory of God is sin. Living the way we want. And then when we do that, we declare independence. And we are diminishing. We are diminishing. Many of us, it's not about going to a fasting, long fast, joining all kinds of prayer. Tackle this issue. Tackle it. And watch your life become glorious. And watch your prayers count. Heavy prayers. You stay here, you speak. Australia shakes. You stay here, you speak. Canadian government bows to your instruction. Don't have to shout. Don't you want to live that kind of life? That's the life I, I've chosen to live a long time. Something happens to your body, you speak to your body, the response. Things are happening. We used to live somewhere in the night. This one is not, is not story. I experienced it. In the night, at a particular time in the night, I will sense demons, evil spirits passing. Once, twice, the third time, I told my wife. So I waited for them. I made a decree. I said, I close this spiritual gateway from today. And until we left that place, it never happened. Because we realized that that place used to be a burial ground. But they built an estate. I have to have that authority. The world is a strange place. You can't live without power, without dominion. Do you know how many times you may have eaten poison? You're not with your children every day. You need to know how to exercise dominion. As they go to school, Lord, I decree that today is blessed for them. They're going out and coming is blessed. They will not be touched by strangers seen by an evil eye. Do you know what it takes for your money to come to you? Your opportunities to come. Dominion. You need to know how to do that. And we do that when we dwell in the glory of God. And sin robs us of the glory of God. Your life is taking a new turn today. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have you been blessed? Can we appreciate the Lord? Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Two things we are going to do. First of all, you stand to your feet and we thank God for what we've heard. And the second one, because something has happened in you today, you're going to roar like a lion. Amen. Because your dominion has been restored. 
you're going to roar like a lion in the jungle of life and watch things fall off from you in the name of Jesus. First of all, Father, thank you for your sending your word. Let that be your prayer, Father. Thank you for sending your word. Thank you for sending your word. Thank you for restoring my glory. Thank you for restoring dominion. Akabelosa. Thank you for sending your word. He sent his word and healed them. The word delivered them from their destructions. You will no longer be destroyed because the eyes of your understanding have been opened. Thank you, Father, for sending your word. Zekaleza. Are you praying? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I receive that word with meekness. I believe that word. I agree with that word. In Jesus' mighty name, we are still praying. Now you're going to roar like a lion. You know, the lion, they say the lion, when it roars, every Every beast, every animal in the forest, no matter how big they stand at attention. Many things will stop today. Many oppressions will come to an end here today. In the name of Jesus. Now the next prayer point you are going to declare. Father, in the name of Jesus, I destroy every oppressor. Now begin to pray. Kapatea. Roar that prayer. Whatever, whoever is an oppressor in the spirits, in my soul, in my body, in my sleep, in my finances, in my destiny, in my health, in the name of Jesus, be destroyed, be destroyed. You need to roar like a lion. Every oppressor be destroyed, be oppressed. You are no longer my master. I am no longer under your authority. Invisible oppressors, unknown oppressors, spiritual oppressors. Are you praying? Oppressors of the morning, oppressors of the noonday, oppressors of the evening, oppressors of the night, generational oppressors, ancestral oppressors. Financial oppressors, whatever that is sitting on my glory, I roar against you today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Is someone praying? Is someone praying? Kataleke potoke ayokoseke every oppressor be destroyed akapataya azolete kenta pateke everything oppressing my destiny everything limiting my life whatever and wherever you are whatever is the origin I exercise dominion with my words in the authority of the name of Jesus oppressors be destroyed oppressors can your Lord and go Kapateke. you need to roar over your finance over your marriage over your destiny over your children over your spouse over the works of your hands over your career Oppressors hiding in the future, oppressors in the close places, in the name of Jesus, be destroyed. Ayakalemateya, 
Shade bokotozia. Ekale shata. Somebody you need to pray. Aseketeke po. Azaleke ya. Oppressors that destroy those that went ahead of me. Oppressors that limited those that went ahead of me. What are you waiting for? Oppressors that cause delay. Oppressors that bring limitation. Oppressors that bring stagnation. Oppressors that bring confusion. Ah, keteke patele. Today, not tomorrow. Even now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, be destroyed, be destroyed. Akunda, Akunda, Akunda. Something is happening. Someone you need to press in is a warfare. Roar like the lion of Judah. Roar, don't turn away from any. Roar, don't be afraid. Roar. Kabalekeya. Shadabakaya. Aseketeleke Raka Pate. I am not going home the same. The oppressions of the oppressed, they have come to an end. Oppressors be destroyed. Destroyers be destroyed. Kalabataya. Kapateke. Ashalabande. Aseketele. This is Mount Zion. Upon Mount Zion there is deliverance. Upon Mount Zion there is holiness. Chains have been broken. Invisible limitations are shattered. Eyes have been opened. A kapateke. A shalabaya. Pray, declare, roar. You're praying with revelation. You're praying with understanding. Good understanding procures favor. You have the favor of the Lord. This is the day of somebody's favor. Akapatea. Azabale keyebakate. Oppressors oppressing my children. Oppressors oppressing my spouse. Oppressors that don't want me to break through. That don't want me to get married. Invisible, heavenly, spiritual. Oppressors from water bodies. Oppressors from evil altars. Oppressors of the powers of the air. Kabale keteketeya. In the name of Jesus. Be destroyed. Alekedia. Bare shataya. Something is happening. Egede ibasaya. Oppressors in my future. Oppressors in my tomorrow. Oppressors laying siege. Ah, kapateya. I roar and release the fire of God. Wherever you are hiding, wherever you are located, in my body, in my destiny, in my future, in my present, in my past, be destroyed. Ah, Shadabaya. Ayotoya. Life is a jungle. Don't fight fair. Roar like a lion. Masalabaya. Oppressions that bring evil patterns. 
Oppression that bring patterns of limitation. Oppressions from my father's house, from my mother's house, from strange lineages. Few seconds left, roar, roar like a lion, roar in the spirit, let your voice be heard by the voice of the Lord. The Assyrians will be put into subjection. Locate them in the future. Locate them with your prayers. Oppressors hiding in the future. Traps of oppression. Traps of limitation. In by tomorrow in my future, I locate you with my prayer. I destroy you with my prayer. Kabbalah satire. In the future of my children. In the future of my career. In the future of my marriage. In the future of my ministry, in the future of businesses, in the future of this church, in Jesus' mighty name, we are still praying. The Lord has asked me not to pray over us after these prayers because whatever you pray for is what you go from this service. You go with from this service in Jesus' name. The second prayer point and then we'll round up. We are going to pray against deceiver. Satan is a master deceiver. It was by deceit he got Adam. He didn't go to Adam directly. He went through the woman Eve and deceived her. That's why the Bible says the woman being deceived Adam was not deceived. Deception is his primary weapon and when he deceives you look at the result in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 19 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 19 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 19 while he promises you liberty promises you the soft life. Let's do it fast, fast. He himself is a servant of corruption, servant of decay. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought into bondage. How does he, Satan overcome us by deception? So he overcomes us by deception to bring us into bondage. Poverty, confusion, suicidal thoughts emptiness depression barrenness those are the prisons and the pits of Satan somebody is coming out today look at Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 we are going to pray against deception what the Holy Spirit ministered to me is that after this prayer the, because how God delivers us is that he opens our eyes. You start seeing life, issues, and things differently. That's what is going to happen. You now start seeing where he has been taking advantage of you, of your ignorance. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt with flatteries. So he keeps telling you, don't mind it, what are they preaching? Don't mind it, what is he saying? 
flattering you. No, nothing has happened. Shebi, you've been living like this now. Have you died since? They have been talking of heaven. Have you, has heaven, has Jesus come? Corrupt you with flatteries. That is another way of deception manifest. His deception manifest, flattering you. Ah, you're doing well. No, don't mind them. Take it easy. Leave pastor. Leave all these men. Collecting people's money. Flattery. But the people that know their God, they shall be strong. And they shall do exploits. You're going to pray. This second prayer point, you will pray louder than the first. Satan's number one preference and master strategy is to deceive us. You're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, every trap of deception in my life expose and destroy. Now begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, every trap of deception, every snare of deception of Satan to keep me as his slave, to keep me in bondage, to cause me not to exercise my dominion, to leak away my glory, every deception that I'm excusing in the name of Jesus, expose and destroy expose and destroy expose and destroy expose and destroy are you praying Kapakete. expose and destroy expose and destroy every trap of the devil every snare of deception every trap of deception Traps that look like breakthroughs. Expose and destroy. Traps that look like a good life. Expose and destroy. Cancels that are traps to destroy me. Expose and destroy. I wish you can see what I'm seeing. Pray this prayer.
in Jesus mighty name we have prayed and received things will happen this week please take note of your dreams and when people start acting unusual around you things will happen this week be it unto you according to your faith as you have prayed and believed, the Lord will exceed your expectations. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please all eyes closed and all heads bowed. You're here and online. If you have not declared the Lordship of Jesus and submitted to it, you're still a slave of the devil. All these prayers won't mean a lot until you have been redeemed until you're born again. All eyes closed, please, all heads bowed, no movement. God brought you to this service because he wants to restore your glory and your dominion. And he's inviting you right now. You have been living like a mouse when he has ordained you to be a lion, the king of the jungle. The people who should be your servants, you are serving them. Because the glory is not in your life, so you can't exercise dominion. But this is the day of visitation. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? God has come. Will you allow him into your heart? If you are that honest person, all eyes closed, please, all heads bowed. Here and online, put your hand, right hand on your heart. And we will invite God in. Everyone, put your right hand on your heart. You want to invite God. You are tired of this life. It's between you and God. Here and online, everyone. Or maybe you are born again, but you know that you have lost the glory. Sin have been having dominion over you. The world has been having dominion over you. And you look back, emptiness. God wants to fill you with substance. Fill you with his glory. So that you can exercise dominion. It's not too late. There is still time. He makes all things beautiful in his time. And this is his time for you. I'm praying in the few next few seconds. Put your right hand on your heart. And say this prayer after me, meaning it. Heavenly Father, I come to you today in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he died for my sins. He was buried. And on the third day, you raised him from the dead. That I may be made right with you. Today, I believe and confess Jesus Christ as Lord. I receive him into my heart as my Savior. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Make my heart your home. Thank you for restoring my glory. And thank you for giving me dominion. I will not live a beggarly life again. Jesus mighty name. Amen. Now I want to pray for you Father for as many that have said this prayer thank you for doing a mighty thing in their lives. You know their hearts, you know their name and their faces. Thank you for a touch, thank you for a translating them from the power of darkness into the kingdom of our dear son. And thank you for releasing to them the power to live like your children. Jesus mighty and matchless name. Amen. Can we appreciate God for everyone who made this decision? Amen. We'll continue on Wednesday by 6 p.m. Don't miss that also. This week, watch the earth shake when you pray. I say watch the earth shake when you pray. 
things that have taken you 10 years, they will take a week to happen. In this new week, you will walk with the favor of God like never before. Strange spirits, strange beings will not stand your presence because the glory of the Lord is seen upon you. Your home is declared a no-fly zone for the agents of darkness. And every and any trespasser is met with instant death. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You go with a new level of glory. This glory of God attracts the dimensions of favor from men you have never experienced. You'll be remembered in the high places of the earth. I see God giving someone a ladder. You have been trying to climb up. But God told me to tell you the ladder has been released. So this week, climb that ladder. Ascend to heights nobody in your lineage has ever reached. And return on Sunday with only testimonies. I decree you're preserved. I decree you're protected. I decree you are the prospered of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Give the Lord a clap offering if you have been blessed. Not to pastor, but to the Lord, a mighty clap offering. Hallelujah. Can you congratulate at least four people and tell them congratulations. 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 My dominion has been reinforced. Amen. Please, if you are in the class, after the service, we'll start just 10 minutes after service, so wait behind. It's like I will give you people refreshment again this Sunday. Your class is very favored. In Jesus' mighty name. We'll close in Hammond Christian Center, declaring Psalm 133 from verse 1 to 3. Let's declare. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hammon and the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For here in Harmon Christian Center, the Lord has commanded the blessing over us, even life forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy are with us all the days of our lives, are dwelling in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. I bless you as one saint of the Lord God's servant. The Lord bless and keep you. In this new week, the Lord makes his face to shine upon you and is very gracious unto you. The Lord lifts up his countenance upon you in particular. In this new week, receive his peace. Receive the glory of God. Receive the dominion of God. I decree in the name of the Lord Jesus concerning you that only glorious things are spoken. And you return on Sunday with overflowing testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace.